Hello, everyone, and welcome to On the Spot. It's a Quarrying Africa program where we speak to industry figureheads about some of the important issues that affect the industry. Today, I'm speaking to Eugene Praise, the MD of ERG Industrial, about the impact of good stemming in blast outcomes. Eugene, thanks so much for affording time to chat to you. Thanks, Manesu. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to our little conversation. Thank you. Eugene, stemming has in recent years become topical. Um, what's the impact of stemming in blast outcomes? So, good question, Mune. So, if you, if you go back to the first principles of blasting and of energy, what you'll see is energy follows the path of least resistance. Uh, and in most cases, that's up and out of the blasting hole. So, what the impact is of good stemming in blast outcomes is if you're able to create more resistance at the top of your hole, less of the energy can escape uh, out of the hole and goes into your rock mass. So the knock-on effect of this is significant where you see a range of uh, benefits on the outcomes. Uh, on the health and safety side, you see a reduction in fly rock, you see a reduction in noise and air blast, some significant ones. And on the productivity side, you see an improvement in fragmentation or in the case where you are trying to cast a blast in a certain direction, you see an improvement in the cast. So it's a very small principle of creating better resistance in the hole that leads to a whole range of benefits with good stemming. Yeah, well explained there. Eugene, traditionally, local aggregate producers have always used the aggregate as a stemming um what 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 are the what is the downside to this approach so muneso honestly speaking if you are a, an operation that's already using aggregate for stemming you're already a leader of the pack you're ahead of of the pack um aggregate has great interlocking properties uh, the the stone itself um, and obviously the sizing. So what happens is if you apply pressure to a column of aggregate, uh, you get interlocking and that in turn creates a counter force against the, the force that you're exerting onto the, onto the column of aggregate. So one of the downsides of using aggregate is uh, because of the particle size um, and the type of explosives you use and the whole diameter, you can get contamination of the upper part of your explosives, where the, the weight and the size of aggregate is such that it can actually sink into a portion of your explosives, and that uh, reduces the effectiveness of your, of your ban. So the, the negative results that you see um, as a result of that is sometimes some oversize of boulders in your upper layer of your block, the, the stemming layer or the capping layer. And second to that, Aggregates, uh, because there's so many spaces and voids in between the, all of the rock particles, uh, it doesn't contain that, that effectively your explosive gases and your shockwave energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but to be honest, as I said, if you're already using aggregate or crushed stone for stemming, you're ahead of the pack. Uh, what we see mostly in, let's call it 80% of the cases on mines, it's it's not economically feasible to get aggregate, so they use their drill chippings or cuttings. Whereas on the quarries, it's it's the other way around. They produce the aggregate, uh, so quarries tend to use uh, aggregate in in the vast majority of the cases. Yes, then uh, we have seen um, uh, the stemming plugs coming into play now. Um, I think uh, the first time I came in contact with the stemming plugs was when I spoke to you. Uh, back in 2019 when he introduced the very stem. Um, what are some of the differences with aggregate stemming? Um, what sort of uh, value do the uh, very stem plugs bring to, to, to the operator? So first point that is very important to understand is a stemming plug is not a standalone solution um, for improved ener energy retention. Um, stemming plugs work with your stemming material, be it aggregate or drill chippings, um, to, to basically get to a point where uh, you 
create an effect that contains your energy for, for much longer. So the, the core principle behind Veristem is, firstly, it's made from a unique uh, type of plastic. It's made through a unique manufacturing process that results in a very flexible, pliable uh, plastic that has a very high tear strength. So what happens when you use Veristem in conjunction with your stemming material? is uh, you get much better containment of your shockwave energy and your explosive gases because as soon as a force is exerted onto the very stem plug it engages with your stemming material the aggregate or the chippings it compacts it and also it forces itself into any voids between your stemming material and the sides of your hole so for moments in time you get better in energy retention on your shockwave and gases and that then goes into your rock mass and not up and out of the hole. Um, so in, in, in summary, very stem is an optimization tool for your stemming that allows you to confine your energy uh, much, much better. Yeah. Speaking of optimization, um, based on the work that you have already done so far on aggregate operations, what sort of improvements have you seen compared to, to the traditional ways uh, that they were using? So, look, I mentioned a bit earlier on in the conversation that there, there's a whole host of benefits. There's, there's yeah. a lot of knock and effects of better containing energy, getting more energy into your block and effectively raising the powder factor um, on your block by utilizing the energy better. So for quarries, you'll know one of the biggest issues is quarries are very close to houses, uh, to communities, to infrastructure. So for them... It is very important to keep your noise down, to keep your air blast down, and to control your fly rock. So a lot of our clients in the quarrying space use the very stem for that reason, so that they uh, have an extra, let's call it insurance policy, to know that they're going to keep air blast down, keep noise down, keep fly rock down, and keep the, the local stakeholders happy. Um, on the productivity side, what we also see is uh, the, the improvement in fragmentation, um, reducing the oversized material in your blast. So the knock-on effects downstream can be significant in that you are now spending less time dealing with your oversize, whether you break it mechanically or whether you do secondary blasting on it. Your load and haul productivity increases, your crusher throughput increases, um, all because of uh, improving the overall particle size distribution of your of your material. Uh, so, so that's first and foremost what we what we see at the quarrying operations. Um, interesting observation is in quarrying and blasting. It's it's almost always a trade off between health and safety and productivity. And health and safety wins. Where we see mines that are overly or not mines quarries that are overly cautious in terms of their stemming heights by design. So they design it to produce no fly rock, but then they get oversized in that uh, top stemming layer. So with very stem, we also uh, apply uh, a step-by-step -step process that we can incorporate the very stem into the blast, reduce the stemming height by either leaving an air deck or, or some other type of method. And then we keep the fly rock down and we solve the problem of oversize as well. Um, so yeah. the system is able to give, give uh, value on both fronts, the productivity and health and safety. Yeah. Eugene, from what I gather from the discussion that I'm having with some of the quarry operators, I think following the introduction of the VAR in 2019, uh, we have seen some sort of a renewed interest in stemming plugs in the local market. What have you done differently as ERG Industrial to change this, percep this perception towards uh, uh, stemming plugs? So when, when we started out with Veristem in 2019, uh, we started out with uh, the African distribution agreement for the product. And since then, we've moved to cover some further territories. But initially, it was quite a shock to us to see how the industry responded to not just the very stem, but uh, stemming products in general. Um, to, to say that it is was greatly negative is an understatement. Um, the, the core reason for this is in the past, there have been other products um, and other suppliers that were not able to deliver on the promises that uh, their products made. 
Um, so a, a lot of the past incumbents uh, were, were seen to uh, be selling something of no real value. Um, so, so that's the context that we stepped into with, with Veristem. And uh, quickly, we adjusted our approach uh, to say the only real way to show operations that the product works is to go and do a, a test in field at the operation, having drones and a bunch of monitors to collect data so that you can scientifically show that you are adding, you are adding value. Uh, we have also seen this uh, renewed interest in the stemming uh, plug market in, in South Africa over the last couple of years. And the role that we played in is uh, making a whole lot of noise about the benefits of, of stemming plugs, going out to sites, producing the results, sharing it far and wide with, with the industry. Uh, so this was one of our goals to to kind of beat that perception uh, through scientific evidence, uh, not through any type of uh, snake oil methods, if we can call it that. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what we've done differently in comparison to other suppliers is uh, we are willing to put skin in the game. We know that our product works. Uh, we're willing to back it and uh, to show it uh, both financially and through the effort that we take in testing out the product at various sites. Yeah. Just in conclusion, Eugene, what does the future hold for this technology going forward, given the renewed interest that we have seen in the industry? So that it, That's a difficult question to, to answer, but perhaps let me take a, a macro view of uh, the industry as a whole, both the quarrying industry and the mining industry. And if we zoom out and we look at uh, the mining and quarrying value chain. The very first step in the mining and quarrying value chain is drilling and blasting. And all other downstream processes are impacted by the performance or your outcomes of drilling and blasting. So if you can make a small change in outcomes, a positive outcome at the beginning of your value chain, you have exponential gains going downstream. So if we look at it from a macro perspective, if you could say uh, you can improve blast outcomes by 5%, let's say across fragmentation for all mining, mining and quarrying sites, uh, there will be an incredible knock-on impact on the bottom line of all of those companies um, on the effective uh, GDP contribution of, uh, of mines to, to the country. So in terms of the future, what we, what we see is that there will be um, new entrants to the market uh, with their own products um, that, that is not very STEM. Uh, we, we welcome that. We welcome competition in terms of uh, this, this market and addressing this problem. Um, if uh, we can't get a mind to use very STEM, if we can get them to improve their blasting um, and their energy retention, it's, it is a win for the industry as a whole. Uh, so we see going forward uh, a rapid adoption of uh, the technology for improved blast outcomes. Uh, we have in our company seen a, a rapid increase in, in the adoption. Um, we've had more sites come on board in the last six months than we have over the last two and a half years. Uh, so we, we see that uh, rapid growth in this industry and also uh, a rapid growth in improvements in, in terms of how to apply the product and get the most value from it. Thank you so much, Eugene, for your time and uh, for explaining it very well. Um, thank you so much. We really appreciate it.